It's very interesting. Hyperhidrosis has really exploded onto the scene in the last two years. As physicians, we knew that it was a problem for our patients. But I don't think we understood two things. One, just how big of a problem it was for people who suffered from hyperhidrosis or extreme sweating. Uh, and two, how much in demand treatment for those things would be. Uh, what's interesting is over the past 24 months, we've had a whole slew of devices that have started to become available. So originally we had at-home therapies. Then that was sort of added to with botulinum toxin, which works nicely but requires treatments one or two times a year. Um, although they work well, people maybe want some more permanence. So now we have other new devices. We have microwave-based devices, ultrasound-based devices, laser-based devices. All of these are designed to take these people who suffer and truly suffer from hyperhidrosis. And we can help them now in a way that's meaningful, long-lasting, and, and perhaps even most importantly, extremely safe. So the world has dramatically changed. As of now with hyperhidrosis, there's sort of three different buckets. Uh, one are the at-home things, and if people are satisfied with them, they tend not to seek a physician's care. Uh, in particular with underarm sweating, which is where most of the action is in terms of research, uh, some statistics show that as many as 20% of the population is adversely affected in a way that they would seek medical care. And so the, the second and third bucket, aside from at-home care, one are injections of things that we call toxins, so botulinum toxins. Botox, Dysport, other things. Uh, that's been around for a little while. It works great. Uh, sometimes insurance covers it, sometimes it doesn't, and so it can get a little bit costly. So the, the, the newest bucket is this light-based device category, or energy-based too. Uh, and that's where uh, some of the more permanent results are coming in. And so we're starting to see efficacy in over 90% of patients with some technologies, with some uh, as high as 95 to 98%, and longevity that goes out now to two and a half years. And so it's starting to seem that these light and energy-based devices may have a leg up on things that were previously available, mostly because they're long-term cures, they're safe, uh, and the patients are very satisfied. A lot of really great things are starting to happen with hyperhidrosis. So first of all, the research now is in the underarms. People sweat on their hands, and that's a tremendous problem from social interaction. You go to shake somebody's hand and your hands sweat, it's a little awkward. Feet sweating is also a big issue, facial sweating. I have a few patients who are lawyers, and when they're in front of a jury, they just don't want to be seen to be sweating. So there's a lot of places on the body that people sweat, and as we get better with these devices, we're going to be able to move to new parts of the body. So I think the future is promising for treating the hands, the feet, the face, and we can start to impact sweating in a positive way so that people sweat in a way that they would consider to be more like a normal person, uh, and that change for them is a huge relief. So one of the other things that's really, really neat about this treatment of sweating with energy-based devices is it's one of the few times that we can merge this world of devices and, the, and what people perceive as the cosmetic world with the general dermatology or medical world. And, and every so often this perfect storm happens, right, where these companies are coming up with technology and it's not just, just for cosmetic reasons, but it really helps people. And I think it's one of those times where this innovation and the research that goes on has helped uh, people way beyond the cosmetic world and uh, I think companies are starting to understand that the future of energy-based devices may be to start to merge it more with true disease states. Uh, and if we can do that even better in the future, uh, really there's a lot of promise.